We're talking fuchsias today on Pots and Trowels, and that's brought to you with the support of Cobra Garden and Darlac. Hello and welcome to Pots and Trials. Well, today I'm at the Harrogate Spring Flower Show in the hall where we've got all these amazing nursery displays. We've got everything you can possibly think of, but what I particularly want to talk about today is fuchsias. And behind me, there is this amazing fuchsia display from Rowellan Nurseries from Wales. And that's been put together by Colleen Jones. Hi, Colleen. Hi, Matthew. Good to meet you. Well, first of all, well done on your award, your Premier Gold, which is the top award here at Harrogate, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. it Thank is. you for that. And a great display. And when you think that it's only the third week in April, you know, that is pretty impressive to have yeah. fuchsias like that. So first of all, how do you get your plants so advanced at this time of the year? We, we've pushed them on a bit with the lights and heat, obviously. So we've cut them earlier than you would normally. We've cut them about August time. So you cut the existing plants down, is that Yeah, what you that's right. So we've started them off in August and we've grown them through the winter with artificial light and a bit of heat. And then we bring them on with a, uh, a special light at night. So it gives them two short nights, which triggers the flowering at this time of year. Right, so quite a lot of manipulating to get them ready for yes, this. So, and you've got, you know, a really big selection here. I mean, I don't know how many different varieties you've got on there, but there, there looks to be an awful lot. Yeah, there's about 70 on there, 70 different varieties on there. Right, OK. Yeah. So you're based in Wales. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, you're... Sunny you're, Wales. Sunny Wales, of course. <laughs> so you don't need any extra lights, really, do you? No. So, um, and your second generation and third generation is also in the business. That's right. The Jones yeah, yeah, family, yeah. which is great. It's lovely, yeah, yeah. It is. So, you know, you've got 70 odd varieties on here, but how many varieties do you grow at the nursery? It's ever increasing. So we're on about 600 at the moment. Yeah, there's a lot of interest in those little tiny ones. They call them Encleandra type fuchsias. Right. So we've got a lot of new ones of them coming through. Okay. We've got a lot of hybridizers that are pushing new varieties through all the time yeah. as well. So it's really interesting, yeah. I like this one here, particularly this one called Show Off, because just look at the size of the flowers on yeah. that. Isn't that amazing? For this time of year, it's great, That's, isn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, this, this is in flower now. I mean, if yeah. anybody's got one of these at home, it probably wouldn't be flowering now. But once it starts, it will continue. Absolutely. Won't it? So, they're natural seasons, more into June. Mm -hmm. And then they'll flower right through until the first frost. Can be as late as November some years, and they're still flowering. So, what would you do to keep that flowering? It's all down to feed then. Once we've got into natural daylight, it's all down to the food. So we're feeding three times a week if we can. Very dilute, but three times a week so that there's a constant supply of food. So if I were growing these at home or anybody watching pots and yeah. trowels, yeah. would you recommend that little and often rather little than once a week? Approach. Absolutely, yeah. Critical with them. Okay, yeah. and that's, will that be a high potash? High potash, something like flower power is ideal for them. Right, okay. Absolutely perfect. Brilliant, that's great. So is this, this, is, a, is this a trailer? Trailing, different... natural what? trailing habit. Right, okay. That's a natural trailing. Then you've got these stiff uprights. You've right. got some that turn the flowers upright as well. So the, the, the flower is actually held vertically like this. Oh, I see, right. And those are really interesting. Later in the year, we won't have those just yet. No, and all different sizes as well, Absolutely. from that size yeah, to the yeah. tiny little ones. Now, over here, I notice we've got, you've just got a few here to, to show me. Yeah. So, because um, Tell us a little bit about these then, you know, because they can be trained, can't they? Yeah, absolutely. Ways. Yeah, so we grow a lot of standards. So we start, obviously, with a little cutting. Okay. These cuttings were taken about eight weeks ago. These How cuttings. would you take a cutting? It just so okay, happens yeah. I've got a knife with uh, There me. we go. Uh, are, you, are you allowed to take a cutting absolutely. off one of these? I'm going to have to use the old glasses, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so shall I take be your knife? Would you, know, you like me sure. to hold that? No, that's fine. Okay. So we're going to take this shoot off. So we're going to take that shoot from there. This is all we need for a, for a cutting here now. So, so this is exactly how you do it on the nursery. Not, not very sharp, I'm afraid. No, no I'll, I'll go and sharpen it a bit more <laughs> for you. So that's all we need there. And the roots are going to come from here. Just here. Wow. And it's quite so, a short cut in that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. You could go even smaller, but that's about perfect. Would you take those lower leaves off or no, not? No, not at all. Straight right. into a little bit of compost there. Now, it can be a peat-free compost. They root okay. perfectly well in peat-free. And you can and do that now? Absolutely, yeah. It's a perfect time of year now, so okay. it's nice and young. The growth's nice and young. So give you a nice that back. started as a little cutting like that? About eight weeks ago, this wow. one. Wow. So now we're going to grow that into a standard. So we're always going to leave these main leaves on. These main leaves, it's like growing a tomato. Yeah. So the main leaves are feeding that stem, and it's that the, the, the leaves that are going to make that stem fatter. Right. But the suckers, or the, the side shoots, need to come off, so we need so to take those off now. Just like a tomato. Just then. like a tomato. We're taking the suckers off, if you like, like that. We're going to leave the main leaves on. Right. Let me hold that. I'll, I'll okay. pretend I'm a big pot. But we want this to go a bit taller yet, Yeah. so we're going to take these off as well. And just a little click upwards, and they're coming from there. So that's more Don't cutting. need a knife or anything. More cuttings. More cuttings material. And then you, once you get to the height you want, so it can be six foot, 
Okay. And we bought every height you want. We're going to need five pairs of these shoots. So one, two, three, four, five, before we nip the top out. Right. So that makes the head. And they will then all bush They'll out. They'll bush out. Yeah. Once we've got to that stage. Here's one you prepared. Here's earlier. one we prepared <laughs> earlier. We're going to just clean off those little side shoots. They'll always develop. Mm -hmm. Even when they're 10 years old, they'll still develop a few side shoots. Then we're going to pinch the head, as we call it. So we've got a nice bare stem. Can you hold it oh, you, that's are fine. you all right? Okay. We're all right. Okay. You've done this before, well, haven't you? Yeah, once or twice. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got the side shoots coming off. We've already had one pinch on there, one stop, we call it. So we're going to stop them again. So we're going to pinch that there and there again. Right. So it's all about making it bush out and get a really Absolutely. dense head. So I could leave this side shoot like this now and I'm going to get one lot of flowers there. Yep. If I pinch it again, I'll just snap it with my fingers there. Now I'm going to get two shoots coming from there and I'm going to get two shoots coming from there. So I'm going to have four shoots, four branches instead of one. And from pinching out to that to getting flowers, how long does it take? Certain varieties are going to take longer than others and it depends on what time of year, but as a rough rule of thumb, eight, eight weeks. Right. Eight so weeks from long, a stop. No, not at all. And you can time your fuchsias like that. So you can, in essence, start at this time of the year with a young fuchsia plant and have a standard by the end of the summer. Definitely. Absolutely. Right, okay. For your autumn shows, you'd have a lovely standard. Right. Yep. What about this one? This, what yep. sort of fuchsia is this? These this are is... the Bella type fuchsias. Bred by the Dutch to be very compact and very flowery. And what we tend to do with these, we tend to multi-pot them. So right. push them through a bit quicker. We put three little plants into a pot. Oh, I see. And bring it on a bit quicker that way. Right, okay. And they're great for patio containers and outdoors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Often we get asked how many to a container. If you can physically fit them in a container, you're not overdoing right, it. Right, okay. Yeah, because you so, want that impact yeah, anyway, yeah. don't you? We have baskets where we put 12 plants in and they thrive. Right, you know. yeah. Yes, because I've seen you later on in the summer at the shows where you've got huge baskets. Absolutely. And, yeah, and, and again, with all of these flowers, pinch them off. Pinch them off, yeah. And that will encourage yeah, more absolutely. flowers. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Right. And of course, you're deadheading through the summer. So as your flowers fade, they'll leave a seed pod. The flower will normally drop off naturally itself. The seed pod needs clicking off as well. Just nip the seed pods off maybe once a week mm -hmm. and it'll keep it flowering all the okay. way through. So all of the ones we've looked at here are tender they're not frost hardy are they no they're not the the frost hardy ones tend to be slightly more difficult to get them to flower this early right okay but we grow an awful the the most interest is in the hardies of course because yeah. they're lower maintenance okay so what about these and if we're growing these that don't stand the frost what yeah. sort of temperatures would these need to be overwintered at? they'll take down to say a zero right, it won't be okay. a problem to them after that of course you're into problems so they need to be in somewhere like a summer house a glass house somewhere like that yeah. if you can or a nice lit, well lit spare room or something like okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But cool is better than too cool. warm, is it? Yeah. So otherwise you're going to get leggy, you know, stringy sort of growth at that time of year in the winter. Right. Those. Okay. Yeah. And then would you cut them down in the spring or? Yeah. Give them a good pinch out again. Yeah. In the okay. spring. Yeah. And away they go. And plenty of food again. Okay. Now I notice, you know, this is your sales table here. You've yeah, got yeah. you've got lots of varieties, and I noticed that quite a few of these Alice Hoffman, Genie Eye. Dorothy Hanley, these are hardy. So are these yeah. truly garden hardy? Truly garden hardy. So most of our varieties have gone through our Snowdonia winter. Yeah. So Genii, for instance, she'll take minus 18 in our garden. We're on a well-drained soil. And that's important. The well-drained soil is more important Get than the frost. Get that out there for me. <laughs> <laughs> so. There we go. Right, so something like that planted in a container now, yeah. or the garden. So we, would it's make really good, good to have a good root system before we're planting the garden. Oh, wow. So that's, that's the root at this stage now. What we're saying, because we're still early in the season, they're not frost hardy until they're more mature. Yes. So what we're saying, we need to pot this up from a nine centimeter to something like a 13 centimeter now. Get it established on the patio. If the weather's mild, it can stay on the patio now. Mm -hmm. If it's going to be frosty, then you've got a 13 centimeter pot just to lift and bring it into the house for the night. Okay, brilliant. And then we should be right for putting them out at the end of May. Okay. So at the end of May, you should be able to plant them in the ground. Okay, and once they're in the ground, that's it? You that's don't it, they're there forever more then. Okay. A good hard prune in the spring. Very important that we don't prune them in the autumn or the winter. We prune them in the spring. So we leave the twigs there, a little bit sticky and whatever. We leave it all through the winter and have a nice tidy up in the spring. When they start shooting, when your shoots are about an inch long, then they're telling you it's time to cut the rest off. Right, okay. Yep. So yeah, so let them tell you when it's time. Absolutely. Exactly. We'll put that in there, put that out there for somebody to buy. <laughs> right, well, that's brilliant. So I think we've had a brilliant masterclass there. Excellent. Colin, so we there know all go. about feeding, pinching out, deadheading, when to plant out. So there you brilliant. go. So what you need to do is get some fuchsias, plant them now, and you'll have a fantastic display later this summer.
Well, thank you for watching. And remember, you can catch everything that we've done on Pots and Trowels on our YouTube channel. So just search for us, Pots and Trowels. Next week, we're going to be back at Ivy Cottage, catching up in the vegetable plot. So we'll see you then. Bye. Thank you.